as I mentioned earlier, the majority of uh, break-ins these days are front door kicks. And they happen because, not because you haven't got good hardware. You all have got very good hardware. And when you go out, you lock the deadbolt, right? So the deadbolt is always in place. But what a lot of these uh, homes, when they're built, uh, don't install very good hardware on the other side. So the little piece of metal that, that the deadbolt gets thrown into, all right? Have you ever taken and looked at what that's screwed into? They have typically got quarter inch screws that go into the door frame. The trim, not the deep frame of the door. They're going into the trim. So when we go to a break and enter, what we typically find is the deadbolt is still extended. It's still doing its job, but it's almost off its hinges from the force of the kick. And wood splinters are all over the floor from the trim, which is just this tiny little piece of pine. The force of the kick just below the lock has pushed the door so hard that those have torn through that piece of pine. What can you do to strengthen your front door? Here's a 40 cent solution. Go to the hardware store, buy four four inch screws. Replace the little quarter inch screws with the four inch screws so it drills right into the deep part of the door frame, okay? Now somebody's gonna try kicking hard at that. They're gonna hurt themselves, okay? And they're not going to be able to smash their way into your house. When people break into houses, they want to go in and out quickly. They want to get the most bang for their bang as it were all right criminals are lazy they don't want to get caught they want to get the most results for the least effort and if you make your house harder to break into then they are going to uh, stand less likelihood that they're going to try your house okay so having lots of deterrence like a good strong front door how about having a glass storm door if you just have the metal door or the big wooden front door how about installing one of those glass storm doors? And if you do, try installing it in such a way that the handle for the storm door is opposite sides to the handle for the inner door. You gotta picture this. It's not too elegant for me to try and repeat it, but just picture it in your head for a second. Guys, gotta open the storm door, somehow balance, and then the opening for the inner door is on this side. He's not gonna get a good solid kick where he needs it to be to open that door. So a glass storm door can be a good deterrent to help reduce the risk of a break and enter. Nothing is gonna be 100% foolproof, but that will help, all right? There's also things you can buy at a hardware store that go over the tall edges. So if you have a kind of house where it has two doors that have a middle piece, all right, you can get long metal pieces that go on the inner sides of those. And what you're doing is you're strengthening that particular, um, that particular piece of wood. So what happens is uh, the force of the kick is spread out over the full length of the door and it reduces the power of the kick and it makes it harder for them to break in. You can also get little things that go down into the floor for those uh, front doors that have two. All of these things are available in any hardware store, all right? Just go talk to the folks there or go on the computer, Google crime prevention, go to the DRPS website. There's lots of good information under security tips there, okay? Public safety, home security, it's all on the website. You can look it up. I'll also be sending out emails regularly with ideas to keep your house safer. Something not to do, if you get your new 42 inch color uh, television set, and you get it all set up, don't put it in such a way that I can look through the window and see it there and walking by at night. Organize your furniture in such a way that it's not facing a window, okay? So that I can't, because they will, they'll walk around at the back at night and just go shopping. They have a list, they know what they want, and they're gonna go and check out and see who has the good stuff. Oh, and by the way, don't put the box from the television set out on recycling day, all right? Because you're also telling them exactly what you have in the house when they're going shopping. They go shopping on recycling day. They know what's where, okay? Especially after Christmas, man, that's great. They go everywhere looking. Turn those boxes inside out, shred them, whatever you need to do. Don't advertise your cool stuff that you got at your house, all right? Now, what can you do with the stuff that's inside your house to make it less likely to be stolen if your house should get broken into? 
99% of these daytime brake and enters, they go in and they're out in two minutes, all right? They go typically in the front door, up the stairs to the master bedroom, dump the top two drawers of the master bedroom, okay? They know they have to be out of there fast, so they're gonna take what they, what they can find easily. And unfortunately, Canadians have a tendency to keep their money, jewelry, passports, other valuables in those top two drawers. It's as if somebody gave us the idea that, oh, if I put it in with my underwear, they're not gonna go through my underwear, right? Unfortunately, they have no such compunctions, all right? They are going to go through those drawers. That's the first place they're gonna go. So don't keep your valuables there. If you have to keep them in the house, and it's better for you to keep them in a safe deposit box at your bank, but if you have to keep them in the house, think of places that you can keep them that the bad guys are not likely to look. For example, one of the officers that I work with, he wraps his wife's jewelry in pink butcher paper, marks it squirrel meat, and puts it at the bottom of the freezer. Well, while they might steal a T-bone steak, they're not likely to steal squirrel meat, right? So think of unusual things that you can do, places that you can put them that are not likely to be found. Maybe you have some ductwork. You could find a little place up in the ductwork. Maybe you have uh, some rafters. You know, you can put the uh, passports up in the rafters. Whatever you do, make sure you tell your spouse where you put them. Because if you're anything like me, I have lots of safe places and my husband will say, so where did you put such and such? Um, I was in a safe place. I just got to remember where that is. So make sure you remember where your safe place is, okay? Another really great idea they've come out with lately, and you'll find them in the hardware store. They're called a the little wall safe. It's the same size and shape and color as an electrical outlet. And you just cut a hole in your wall at the same height that you'd put an electrical outlet. And, and it's like a little pull-out drawer kind of thing. You put your jewelry in there, you put it in, and you screw it in. And it there just looks like any other electrical outlet. Now, who's going to think of that, right? And there's all kinds of great doodads and gadgets that you can get to make your house safer. They actually have a thing that you can get where uh, it replicates the, uh, the flashing kind of light of a television. So if you're going to be away, you're going to put your lights on timers, right? But you could also get one of these things if you want and put it in the upstairs bedroom window and it's got the look, uh, if you were standing on the street, of that blue kind of flashy light that you would see if a TV was on. I just plug that in or put it on a timer and then it looks like there's someone home watching TV. They also have things that um, look like a um, security camera, all right? And it's really cool. It's not a real security camera. It runs on batteries, but what it does is it's motion activated. So if someone's standing at your door, they do this, the camera swivels and follows them. They do this, camera swivels and follows them. Now, if that doesn't freak them out, you know, it doesn't matter, it's not a camera, they think it is, that's the important thing. Make sure you put those things up high so they can't just pull it down, okay? Same thing with your uh, lighting. A lot of people install um, motion uh, sensor lighting around their house or they install um, the kind that come on at dusk and so forth. But the thing is, if a guy can just reach up and unscrew the bulb, it, it kind of defeats the purpose, right? So put it high enough and you know, with the motion sensor, make sure that you adjust it so it's sensitive, sensitive enough to catch a human being passing. But if the raccoon runs through your backyard, it's not going to set the lights off and drive your neighbors nuts, right? Okay. So do check out some of the things that are available and use them. I think the biggest thing with Neighborhood Watch is not just knowing what to do, but actually doing it. Because it's like so many people say, unfortunately, I had a block captain in a Neighborhood Watch had his house broken into just this past week. And he said, I've been to all your trainings, Morgan. I knew all the things I was supposed to do. And I was always going to get around to strengthening my front door. But his son was home sleeping at 12 o'clock noon. And someone busted in his front door. Now, the son woke up and came. And I guess because the son, you know, made some noise, they ran away and nothing was stolen. But the problem was, I mean, not only has he got the expense of fixing his door, but this 18-year-old son kind of got scared you know that was a pretty traumatic incident so you know it can happen to any one of us nobody is going to be completely risk free but you can do lots of things to reduce the risk okay thank you very much for coming thank you